Welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome to Hot Wheels Customizing 101 and in today's video we are going to be taking this 1962 Corvette from Hot Wheels and I'm going to show you how you can very easily customize it using some simple tools that you probably have laying around the house. The first thing that we have to do is separate the chassis from the body of this car. In order to separate the frame from the body of this car we will be using a very simple power drill and two different sized drill bits. I will be starting with a 764 drill bit and finishing off with a 532nd drill bit. As you can see on the bottom of this Hot Wheel we have two rivets that we need to drill out to separate the frame from the uh, body. Now on this one here there are nice little indentations already started in these rivets that will allow me to get my smaller drill bit started real easily. However if that was not the case and it was a very flat type rivet or a mushroom head rivet the first special tool you might think about buying is this this is a spring loaded center punch and basically you push down until it pops back out and that will put a little indentation in your rivets so that your drill bit does not wander off of them when you're trying to drill them out you might have to do it one or two times i'll show you kind of how it works here so you put it on here push do you hear that snap that's all you have to do several times and you'll have a nice little indentation I have switched over to my larger bit now. As you can see, I opened up the holes on these rivets quite substantially with that smaller bit, if it will focus that is. And all I'm trying to do here is use the bigger drill bit and just drill until this whole ring on this rivet right here just kind of pops off. Now let's see if we can separate the frame from the body. Yeah, easy peasy. Before we get started tearing into this chassis and removing these wheels and axles, let's take just a moment and talk about wheels and axles. There are basically two types of setups for Hot Wheels. You have your traditional Hot Wheels matchbox style wheel and axle setup, which is one of these here, where you have the wheels on an axle with, you know, running straight through on both ends. Now this is a great setup for a car that you want to play with because the wheels spin independently of each other. They do not rely on the axle to spin in order to roll, which is awesome. I, however, like using these, this setup right here that has a solid axle. These wheels spin together on this solid axle, which means I will need to make an axle tube out of this piece of brass here to mount this in my frame. The reason I prefer this style of wheel setup over this style is for looks. And let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. On the original Hot Wheels Matchbox style wheel with the axle running through the center of the wheel itself, you kind of lose that realistic look. But with something such as this here, as you can see right there, you still have your center cap, which looks pretty awesome. The wheels that are in this little tray here, these are M2 wheels. I would go to my local Hobby Lobby and they have some M2 cars that come with a set of wheels on the car and three extra sets that you can change out on those cars. Well, I don't particularly care for the cars that much, so I rip all the wheels off of them. So I get four sets of wheels per car. That's how I got that little uh, plethora of wheels there. And I also buy these wheel kits from Greenlight. There are many ways that you can remove your axles and wheels from the frame of your Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars. You can cut these little tabs off. You can cut the axles themselves. For me, the easiest thing I found is to take a pair of nice, sharp, pointy tweezers and just try to slip it under the axle and just pry and boom, right out you go. Before we start cutting the brass tubing to make custom axle tubes, we need to find the right width for our wheels to fit within our car. And as you can see before us here, I have some different width of axles right here. And these come in the M2 kits for different lengths. Some of the cars have narrower frames like this one than other ones. And if you didn't, you could simply cut down one of the axles to fit. I'm super glad that I chose this car to show you guys how to customize a Hot Wheel with because this frame 
is going to need some work to get it to fit the way I want it to fit. As you can see, the rear wheels here, they are as tight as they can get to the frame, and they're still rubbing against the inner fender wells to the point to where you cannot match the body and the frame together. So, on the back end, we're going to have to even narrow this even more to squeeze these wheels in just a little bit. That's awesome. On the front end here, if you can see how much axle we have here, that's pretty wide. But the original ones were so narrow, it just it looked really weird to me. I like this stance much better than that super narrow stance on the front end. Again, this is just a little bit too wide, so I'm going to have to cut off a piece of the actual axle here to make it fit much better. But that means we're going to be making two custom axle tubes for this frame. We're going to start by narrowing the rear end of this car to get our rear wheels to tuck in just a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to be using just a small, inexpensive jeweler's file. We have this side filed down just a bit, and we have not done this side yet. Well, I've spent some time with the files, and as you can see, if you remember, there were two little humps right here in the back, kind of like right here in the front. That's how much filing I had to do to get this narrowed in for these wheels to tuck in far enough. I don't want to go any narrower than that on this because it's going to make this super weak. My next step is I'm actually going to have to take this already very short axle and cut it down a little bit and set these wheels on here as they're going to be to see if I need to trim off the back of these hubs on these wheels a little bit. I'm hoping not, but uh, that's the next step. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself there. Before I actually cut this axle, I want to actually cut the axle tube to fit in this chassis. That way when I do cut the axle, I'm cutting it to fit the axle tube instead of this chassis because it's definitely going to be different. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open this up a little bit and we're going to use some nippers to cut off these tabs and I'm going to use a round file to file out the trough just a little bit bigger to accept this axle tube to sit in flush. Then we'll cut this first. Again, this first. This is the tricky part. You need to try to make sure you keep this file nice and parallel as you're doing this. The first one I ever did, my wheels were kind of like that, kind of catty, cattywampus, and uh, it just was no good. I filed this open enough, just enough, so that this tube will have a nice cradle to sit in. In order to cut it, I again, I'm using my Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. And I have this block of wood here, and as you notice, I have a little piece cut out here in the center. It was a happy accident. I didn't actually design it like that. I found it one day, and it works out perfectly. That way, I can keep my stock flat against this. I'm able to hold the end with a pair of pliers because this will get hot. And as I'm cutting through with my wheel, the wheel has some place to go. So that way it's not getting torqued. That way I try to get a nice, flush, even, level cut. So let's turn it on, make some noise, and cut this thing. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a burr, but of course, our trusty little file will take care of that in no time. And there you have it, one very, very narrow axle tube. Again, next step, I'm going to clean all this up, and we're going to glue it in with some super glue. Time to glue in the axle tube. Just a little drop of glue for right now, just enough to hold her in place while we fit the axles. And drop our little axle tube in here. In order for me to narrow this axle, I need to know how much to take away. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to push this all the way against the axle tube on this side. I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm just going to color in this entire other side of this axle. That way when I pull off this wheel, I can see how much needs to be removed and I can allow for how much is inside of the actual wheel itself. That way I don't remove too much. All right, let's try to take a close look at this. As you can see where I marked it with the magic marker, it's almost the same amount of distance between the axle and the side hub of the rim as the wheel actually takes up when it's being mounted on this little knurled area right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just the knurled part off. I'm not going to go any further than that. Okay, axle has been cut. 
We have it mounted in one wheel. Let's slip it into our axle tube, mount the other wheel. Now, one thing you'll know when you cut the burr or the knurling off the end of it, these just don't want to stay on. So I will eventually have to add just a little data super glue in there just to hold it together. But before we do all of that, let's see if this actually fits on the body now. Well, they are tucked in, tucked up in there nice and tight. Let's see if we can get it to roll. Uh, would you looky there? She rolls just fine again. Not Hot Wheels rolling, but I'll take that. All right, I reattached the front wheels real quick just to show you something. I did not like how narrow the front end of this car was. This is not a gas or anything like that. I wanted to fill up the wheel wells just a little bit more, especially since these wheels are just a little bit taller than those. So what we need to do is have a wider axle. Something like this. Now this is just a tad bit too wide, but let me show you the difference. I think that that looks so much better filling out those wheel wells. Now it fits almost perfect. It rubs just a little bit, especially up here on the bumper area and in the inside of the wheel wells just a little bit. So I am going to cut off just a tad bit of the axle itself. Then we will create a custom axle tube for the front end as well. Okay, the axle tube is made for the front end. And hopefully you can see here, there is just a little bit of play. I don't want this super tight because if you have it super tight, it's not going to roll very well. Next step is to do like we did in the rear. We're going to open up this front end to accept this axle tube. And this time when I glue it on, I'm going to leave the wheels and axle end so I can use that to help center it. There's one more thing to be done before we can mount the body back onto the frame. And that is to get rid of this little part right here. And the original, it held down the axles, but now that we have this axle tube here, the eh, axle tube's way too big, it doesn't fit. So we're just gonna grind this down real quick. Now, the nice thing about die cast cars, this metal is super soft. I was able to take my Dremel and just cut a couple of slices in here and then come up with my file and just file it away. Took no time at all. And as you can see, the front end now fits just fine with this new axle tube. However, the rear end, we need to take a look and see if the interior will fit over this axle tube. I kind of doubt that it will because it never usually does. And no, it's in the way. But this is even simpler. We can take care of this right here or right now. Just a pair of side cutters. Come in here. Snip. Snip. Let's try this again now. Now our interior is sitting down just fine. Well, there it is. New wheels attached to the old frame. Now we do have to do some cleanup. I want to paint the underside of the frame chrome again where we did some filing. And of course we need to glue the wheels to the axles. This liquid chrome pen is a paint pen. So I don't know if you can hear it, but there is an agitator in there. So like any other paint, you need to shake it up before you use it. Now, if you look at the tip, it's a pretty good size tip, especially when you're working with small items like this. Now, since this is, you know, nothing super fine, I'm not trying to not get it on something that I don't want it on. I could use a tip, but what I like to do is I like to take this pen and I just have my little paint palette here and I'll just get a couple uh, loads in the paint palette here just by pushing it down. That's how you actually get paint down in the tip. And I will come in with an actual fine paintbrush and I will use that to do my painting. And like I said, this look at chrome. I mean, this stuff is just something else. I just want to show you how well this works one more time. Here is the back end of the frame that we did a lot of um, filing to. And as you can see, there's that black plastic. 
Now I did the other side, coated it with this pen. Look at how shiny that is. And it look it's it's level, it's not streaky. Again, this liquid chrome, it's a really amazing stuff. Okay, I may have fibbed just a little bit. I said that was the last step. There is actually one more thing that I wanted to do that I forgot about. This uh, front end here with all this grill. This in real life, there should be darkness in between these grills uh, teeth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our airbrush paint, our Wicked. I'm going to put a little dab in my palette here and a very fine brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fill that in with some black. The black is in the grill. And to me, that just makes a world of difference, breaks up all of that chrome. Let me show you real quick how I did this. I literally put just a little drop of black paint in my palette. Didn't even use, not even a tenth of what I put in there. I took a fine tip brush, finer than this actually, dipped just the tip into that paint, and I came just straight in. And just kind of flooded in between these grill teeth. And I actually had to go over a couple of them several times to get it filled in completely. Just take your time. It's very easy to do. And finally, we are at the point where we can permanently attach our tires to this frame. Normally, I would not like to permanently attach my tires. But with cutting the knurling off on some of these and the fact that I had these on and off these axles so many times, I've actually wallowed out the hole here on the back of these hubs for these wheels to the point where they're just not staying on well at all. I've already glued this end into each side of the tires. Now what I want to do is I want to be very careful because I don't want to get any glue against our axle tubes when I put them on. So we're going to, have to put the wheel or the axle into the axle tube that we're going to be gluing in from the other side. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of space between the back of that hub and the axle tube. So how I plan on gluing this up without making a mess and gluing my wheels stuck solid to axle tube, I'm going to take just a regular straight pin. I'm going to get just a little bitty dab of glue on the tip of that. I'm going to just stick it way down in the hole of the back of these hubs or the back of these wheels. It's not going to take much glue to hold these on. Again, we're not playing with it. We just don't want them to fall off when we're picking them up and moving them around and, and showing them off to our friends. It's done. At least for now that is. However, if all you wanted to do was put custom wheels on your car, you're done. Now, what we did today was we modified the frame, and this was a pretty heavy modification for a frame. We added custom axle tubes. We had to, actually I forgot to mention, I had to cut up the interior a little bit to get the wheels to fit up in there just right. And we put custom wheels on it. And again, if all you wanted to do was change out the wheels you're pretty much done. The next thing I would do, if that was it, is I would secure the body to the frame. As you can see, it, it stays on pretty well by itself, but if it was me, I would at least take some super glue and drop it in on top of these posts here for the rivets we're at. My preferred method is to drill out these posts, tap them, and put little screws in them. Now, as I said, I'm not done. I absolutely love the paint job on these cars as they come from Hot Wheels. I think it's amazing, but I want to do a better paint job. I picked out these wheels with the black stripes around the tires and the kind of chromy blacked out wheels for a reason. I'm going to give this a custom paint job. If you want to see what that custom paint job is and how to do it, well, come watch the next video. If you're getting into this hobby, if you want to start customizing your Hot Wheels, I know most people have drills and drill bits at home, but a lot of you probably do not have things such as a spring-loaded center punch, a bunch of small hobby or needle files, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to put a link in the description to all of the tools that I used today to modify the frame on this little 62 Corvette. That way you can at least check them out, price them, buy them through Amazon. That's where I have an affiliate through. That's awesome. It helps the channel. Or don't. At least you know what the prices are, you know what they're looking for, pick them up, that would be awesome if you support the channel. But get get these tools, especially the files, you definitely are going to need some files. This will come in handy in our next video.